Welcome to the Perry Institute for Marine Science. My name is Lily and today I'm going to be interviewing Dr. Valeria Pizarro. Valeria is our senior coral reef researcher here at the Perry Institute and she's also the co-author on a paper that came out last week about the devastating stony coral tissue loss disease. So if you've been following our channel at all, we've been calling this disease coral COVID because it's so bad. It's ravaging through Caribbean reefs and reefs in the Bahamas. It's killing brain corals and pillar corals at an alarming rate. And Valeria is going to tell us a little bit about the latest research today, as well as what we can do as individuals and as ocean lovers to really, you know, to help stop the spread. Hi, Valeria. <laughs> Hi, Lily. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's really nice to see you. Um, so why don't we just dive right into it? Uh, excited about this new paper that came out. Can you just share a little bit about the study and what was the intention of the research? So Stony Coral Tissue Loss Disease, that is the official name of this new disease, uh, has been affecting corals in the Caribbean, especially in the north side of the Caribbean since 2014. And the impact of the, this disease, it's very worrying because it's actually affecting many, many species, killing a lot of corals in a very short period of time. But in the Bahamas, even though the first time that it was observed and described was in Florida that is very close to the Bahamas, was only here in the Bahamas uh, observed in, at the end of 2019 in Grand Bahama. And since then it has spread from Grand Bahama to New Providence and other islands like Eleuthera and San Salvador. So the idea of this first manuscript was just to report where the disease is, how it has advanced since the first time that it was recorded in 2019, and how it has advanced in different reefs, which species have been affected, and how the, all the different coral areas are changing due to this disease. Mm. Yeah, and I noticed in the paper it talked about ballast water from ships, and there's a thought that, you know, this might be the cause of stony coral tissue loss disease in the Bahamas. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we don't know exactly what is the microorganism causing or responsible of this disease. Some people think there is bacteria. There is a new study that came out between two or three weeks ago talking about the possibility of a virus that first affects the symbiosis, especially the so yeah, the, the soas and tela that lives within the coral, and then just affects the whole coral and it kills the coral. So we know that it's waterborne uh, because of how it has been spreading all around the, the Caribbean. But we don't know exactly how it's transported, but because we have the ships, especially the, um, the, the large ships that are just coming from Florida and other parts to the different ports. We think that that was the main entrance of this disease into the Bahamas, especially because the first places where it was recorded in Grand Bahama was near to the port, to the main port of Grand Bahama. And that is almost the same case in, in New Providence, where we have it like kind of the first sites were closer to where the port is and then just spreading to the other areas. So we think that the ballast water that is carried by this ship was the main, uh, the main way to get into the Bahamas. Right. And I know you talked about, you know, the microorganism or like the pathogen causing this is unknown. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to dive on a reef? you know, near the port that's been ravaged by this disease? Like, what does that look like? How does it make you feel? It's, it's really heartbreaking, actually, when you go not only to places that are close to the port, but the places that have been 
affected by this disease for more than a year now, especially in Grand Bahama, especially places that are shallow between one, two, five, six meters, where there used to be a lot of rain corals. And right now, what we're having is just like uh, a lot of dead colonies. So in some of the photos that PIMS team have been taking from these reefs that are the photomosaics, we have seen like in before the, the disease, we saw a reef that had hundreds of colonies of rain corals. And right now in the same place, we, are, we only have between four and five colonies. So that's, a, that's a, the number is hundreds of dead colonies in a very short time. So in this paper, you talk a lot about infection rates and usually for brain corals. I'm wondering, you know, were they higher and faster than you expected them to be? Uh, it's, it's much faster than you expect. Like, of course, you read papers and they tell you about it. But one thing is to read about it. And the other is to go and have a look. When you go to a place where you expect to have a lot of living corals, and then you jump in the water and you don't see many living corals. It's very, it's very frustrating. It's very sad, especially because you understand that this can be a major change on Caribbean coral reefs. And that will affect all of us. It's not only the animals that live within the reef, but it's going to affect all the communities, especially in the Bahamas, that we depend on coral reefs for tourism and for protection, for island protection. So it's, it's very, it's very sad. Yeah. So as you were mentioning, and honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind too, is like dive tourism, fishermen, you know, all of these people that depend on healthy coral reefs and sustainable fisheries for their livelihoods. I'm curious what the individual can do, you know, how can, how can we help to stop the spread of this disease onto coral reefs? So there are a few things that uh, everyone can do, we all can do. The first is to get informed about the disease, like look on the, we have, we have a lot of communication, like um, photos and fact sheets and everything where people can look at the photos and see, okay, so this is how the disease looks. So, and this is what it's causing and this is what it is. So that's one thing, like get information and just to be able to identify or just to see something and you say like, oh, this might look like, like a disease. The other thing is that is very, very important, especially for people that it's coming from the US, on their boats or just like the big vessels or divers. We do have information as well, how to clean your gear, even if you're snorkeling or diving, how to treat the ballast water. Uh, so there is a lot of information. So the Per Institute is working along with the Bahamian task force that was um, organized when this disease was observed the first time, and this is led by the Bahamian government. And we had produced a lot of communication strategies just to inform people, so people can go to PIMS webpage, but as well look around, and there are all the recommendations on how to treat ballast water, how to clean your diving equipment, your mask, your snorkel, your fins. The other thing is don't touch corals not even if they're diseased or not, like don't do it and try to be very, very aware of your surroundings for your diving and snorkeling. And of course, if you see something that you think that is a disease, if you have a camera, take the camera and uh, we have a link in our webpage where you can send all the information and there is a, a link as well to inform the Bahamian government that it will go to the task force and then we can go there and just um, assess the area and see if the disease is present or not. Do you feel like, you know, if we're properly rinsing our gear and we're treating our ballast water, do you feel like there's a hope for coral reefs in the Bahamas? Um, what are the next steps here? 
I think there is a hope, but it's important to understand that we are not going probably to be able to stop the disease, but if we do that, we'll like kind of delay the spread of the disease going from a place where we have it to a place where we don't have it anymore. We don't have it not anymore, but we don't have it. So that 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 is actually really good. And some places maybe won't get it. Um, that is that is a hope. But even if we have it in a place and we just rinse our gear and just go to another place, that will stop the spread. And then if you go there and you see one colony and you send us the information, we will be able to get there when it's just starting and we can treat as many corals and as as possible and we will save as many as possible. Right. So what you're saying really is, you know, the main goal for us is to stop the spread. And then we can give scientists and researchers and volunteers the opportunity to save some of these reefs before the disease overwhelms them. Exactly. Yeah, we need to stop the spread. That's the that's the main the main step that any person can take in the Bahamas to save coral reefs. Right now it's just stop the spread. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Valeria. I really appreciate you coming on today to talk to us a little bit more about this devastating disease um, and just sharing your knowledge and how we can help. So thank you. Thank you, Lily. It was a pleasure. And hopefully everyone learns about this. And it was great to be here with you.